Okay, this is the second video in the Unit 3 series. Here we're going to be focusing on molar mass. So we're going to start with the concept of the mole, and then we're going to use molar mass to convert between moles and mass, and we're going to use the number of molecules or atoms um, and the number of moles. We can do conversions that way using Avogadro's number. So here's what our outline for this unit looks like. Um, we're going to start with, um, actually, I'm sorry, I said it backwards. We're going to start with Avogadro's number and look at how to convert between moles and the number of atoms. And then we're going to look at molar mass and convert between moles and grams. Now, remember a few minutes ago, um, we said carbon-12 is the standard for atomic mass. It's assumed to have a mass of exactly 12 AMUs. This is important because it's the basis for calculating all atomic masses on the periodic table. Now, those atomic masses are really in grams, and we want to deal with the macroscopic in chemistry. We don't want to talk about an atom or a few atoms because there's only a few microscopes in the world that can actually monitor that. So instead, we want to deal with a quantity that is relatively large and visible to us with the naked eye. So we do that with the mole. The mole is the number of atoms of carbon-12 in exactly 12 grams of a carbon-12 sample. Now, Avogadro's number ends up being 6.022 times 10 to the 23 units. So 12 grams of carbon-12 is one mole. We get this number from the periodic table. It should be 12.0 um, oh exactly for this isotope. Um, and it's going to have exactly this many atoms. That really, guys, is a really large number. Uh, one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 23. It ends up giving us something like this many atoms. That's a whole lot. <laughs> now, Avogadro's number it was originally named for Amadeo Avogadro, who's the one that said, um, that proposed this originally. Um, it is unitless, guys. So if we're talking about um, something that's an atom, say something like sodium, one mole of sodium is going to contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium because this is an atom. If we're talking about O2, O2 is a molecule. It's two oxygen atoms bonded together. One mole of oxygen is going to contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd O2 molecules. Same thing here. One mole of sodium chloride is going to contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd sodium chloride molecules. It's important to remember that this is unitless because it's really hard sometimes for students to remember you don't necessarily go from moles to atoms. You could be going from moles to um, molecules. In fact, I have these mole analogies. I'm not going to go to this right now. But I would click on this link in your PowerPoint and follow it. It gives a lot of really interesting analogies to kind of help you visualize how large Avogadro's number is. Um, I think, for example, a mole of pennies is enough to have every person on Earth, and I know this information is a little dated, probably four or five years, but it should still work. Um, every person on Earth could spend basically a million dollars every hour, day and night, for their entire lives and not run out of money. It is that large, guys, okay? Now, in addition, um, I think there's a couple analogies about marshmallows. If we had a mole of marshmallows, you could stack it something like nine miles high over the whole entire Earth's surface. Um, 
it's really incredible. So if you have a chance or you're just kind of struggling to visualize this, these may help. Now, in addition, this is where, oh, goodness. Okay, well, I have one later in this in this slideshow. Let's go down here then. It's not here. It's in the next video. There we go. It's usually easier for you guys to um, follow this. I don't have a mouse, which makes things a little hard for me. Now, here's the mole concept map that I give you guys um, for use in class. You obviously don't get this on a test. To convert between moles and either atoms or molecules, you use Avogadro's number. We're going to treat this as a conversion factor, where one, one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd something, okay? So for example, we can calculate the number of atoms in a 5.24 mole sample of sodium. Now, we are given units of moles and we're given and we're looking for atoms. Because this is an atom, we can go directly from moles to atoms. We don't have to worry about the fact that sodium is a molecule because it's not. So we're going to be able to do this in one step. And we can do this using Avogadro's number because we know that one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay? So setting this up, we have 5.24 moles. To cancel moles, we put one mole down here and 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, I didn't give myself enough room, atoms, and I should have sodium written everywhere. If I was a good girl, I would do that. And so in our calculator, we're going to enter 5.24 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and that's going to give us 3.1 we only we have three sig figs here, four here, so I'm going to use three. So it's going to be 3.16 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sodium. And that's our answer. Make sure you are calculating or looking at the number of sig figs and make sure you are setting up your problems. Calculate the number of sodium atoms in a 4.21 mole sample of sodium oxide. Now, guys, sodium oxide isn't an atom. It's, there it goes. It's a compound. It's a molecule. So we can't go from moles to atoms here. We have to go from moles to molecules. And we're going to do that using Avogadro's number. And we're going to go from molecules to atoms. I just say this using the formula. Um, <laughs> it's usually easier than what people um, want to assume. Okay, so let's make our plan. Oh, I guess I can't erase it anymore. We're given moles, and we're looking for atoms. Because this is a compound, we have to do this in two steps where we go to molecules and then we can go to atoms. Now to go from moles to atoms, we know that one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And to go between molecules and atoms, we use the formula. So one molecule of Na2O has how many uh, sodium? We're looking for sodiums. How many sodiums are here? Two, right? 
So one molecule has two Na atoms. That's usually what I mean. It, it, it's much easier than most other conversions. So I'm going to set this up. We have two steps, so I need two sets of columns. That's not enough space. We're going to start with the 4.21 moles of Na2O. It's important to write all of your unit. The whole unit is moles of Na2O, not just moles. We know that every time we have one mole of Na2O, we get 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And I'm going to abbreviate it with a C so that it's clear that it's not moles. Na2O. Just make sure it all fits. And then every time we have one molecule, oops, that was an accident, of Na2O, we get two atoms of Na. How am I doing that? What am I touching? All right. So in your calculator, you want to enter 4.21 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, times 2. And you should get something like 5.071 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sodium. Let's go back and look at our sig figs. How many sig figs are in 4.21? It's just three, right? This guy is 4. I, I don't think that's an exact quantity, so I'm going to assume it's not. Um, and then for our formula, every molecule has exactly two atoms of sodium. You're not going to split that apart. So this is an exact, so it's an infinite. So we only want three sig figs in our answer, so this one goes away. So it's just 5.07 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sodium. So that was how we convert between atoms and moles. Um, on the other hand, we can look at how to convert between grams and moles. And the way we do that is with molar mass. Now, the molar mass of, or the atomic mass, is on the periodic table. And so if we're just talking about atoms of something, we can turn to our periodic table and get those numbers. For something like a compound, so here we have sodium's uh, atomic mass. If we have a compound, we have to really evaluate every element that's there. Now, because I tend to make mistakes, I do it a little bit differently than most textbooks. I tend to make a whole table rather than just plug in some numbers to the calculator. The table I do is I say atom, number, mass, total probably looks pretty familiar to the formula tables from last unit. For sodium chloride, we have sodium and Cl. There's just one of each here. I still write that one, and that's where I differ from a lot of textbooks. A lot of textbooks will leave that one off. I write it in to make sure that I didn't forget to count. Atomic mass of sodium, I already have it right here, is 22.99 from the periodic table. Chlorine is 35.45. You only really need to go to two decimal places for me just because um, that's all you have to worry about. It's going to give you the right answer on a test. It's If it's different, it's going to be in the 100th place by maybe one number. It's not going to be problematic. So the total mass from sodium here is 22.99. Total mass of chlorine is 1 times 35.45. And then you can just add these guys together to get 4, carry the 1, 4, carry the 1, and you get a nice 58.44 grams per mole for um, sodium chloride. No idea what this is. We'll move it over there. Water. Here we have atom, number, mass, and total. Hydrogen, oxygen. This time we have two hydrogens, one oxygen. 
the mass of each hydrogen from the periodic table. It's 1.007, I think, but the one I give out rounds to 1.01, .01, or you can round to the second decimal place. Mass of oxygen is 16.00. And you end up getting a total mass of hydrogen. 2 times this is 2.02. 2, 1 times 16 is 16.00. Add them together to get 18.02 grams per mole for water. Okay. Now for um, ammonium sulfate, it's a little bit different. You've got parentheses. Remember that this number refers to everything in the parentheses. So here we have two ammonium ions and one sulfate. I'm still going to do the atomic mass table the same way. We have nitrogen, hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. Two times one is two nitrogens. Two times four is eight hydrogens. We have one sulfur and uh, four oxygens. Each nitrogen from the periodic table is 14.01 grams. Each hydrogen is 1.01. Sulfur should be 32.06, and then oxygen is still 16. There we go. So this is 32.06 and 16. This gives us total masses of 28.02, 8.08, 32.06, and 64. You add these together, 6, carry the 1, 16, 22. 9 and 4 is 132.16. I may have used a different last one when I did this on my own. But you get the idea, 132.16 or 17 grams per mole for ammonium sulfate, which I can't write. Can I? Kind of. SO4. Okay. This is a little bit of a different type of question, but it kind of ties in um, the last concept as well. Let's calculate the mass of a single atom of iron. So we want grams per atom. We don't know mass, uh, grams per atom. The periodic table gives us grams per mole. And the... And Avogadro's number gives us atoms per mole. And so we can use these two conversion factors to cancel moles, all right? So let's start with the grams per mole because we want grams on top. And for iron on the periodic table, it is 55.85. So we have, um, let me go down here, 55.85 grams of iron per mole. And we know that every time we have one mole, and I'm writing mole up here so that my units cancel, we get 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of Fe. Now, guys, this is a problem where if you do not know how to enter it into your calculator, you will absolutely get the wrong answer. And I'd say about half the class usually misses this because they don't enter it in their calculator correctly. You have to tell your calculator the correct number of order of operations. If you enter this as 55.85 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, it's going to divide this by this and then multiply by the times 10 to the 23rd. It's going to give you a positive exponent. That is wrong. The better way to enter it in your calculator is to either have 55.85 
divided by parentheses 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd or 5. Uh, excuse me 55.85 divided by 6.022 e to the 23rd either of these ways that you enter it will tell the calculator the order of operations you prefer this to be multiplied by 10 to the 23rd before you divide um, this number by it okay you should get something like 9.27 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams per atom of iron. Where's my other? There it is. Okay. Um, if you are not getting that, you need to come see me during office hours or send me an email or a screenshot of your calculator. Somehow let me know what's going on. Calculate the number of atoms in 3.20 grams of carbon. Here we have a little bit of um, more of a combined problem. So we're going to go from grams to atoms. Now if you think back to our mole concept map, our mole concept map to go from grams to atoms, we have to go from grams to moles using molar mass. And then we can go from moles to atoms because carbon is just an atom, it's not a molecule, um, using Avogadro's number. There we go. You always want to go to moles. Moles, moles, moles. I cannot stress that enough. You can't do hardly anything with grams in chemistry. You must get to moles. So the first thing to do is always go to moles. And we're going to do that with molar mass. To go from uh, moles to atoms, we're going to use Avogadro's number. So to do this, we have 3.20 grams of carbon. We need two columns because we have two arrows. Every time we have 12.01 grams of carbon, we get one mole. Now I get this quantity from the periodic table. We also know that every time we have one mole of carbon, we get 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of it. So in our calculator, we have 3.20 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 12.01 and you should get something like 1.60 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. Now guys, just to put this in perspective, this is usually about, or at least very close to the mass of the carbon that's handed out on a pencil. So your pencil lead, or pencil, the graphite in your pencil, um, has about this many atoms of carbon attached to it. It's kind of a big number. Calculate the number of hydrogen atoms in 6.91 grams of water. So again, we're starting with grams, and we're looking for atoms of hydrogen. What do we need to go to first? We can't go from grams to atoms. We have to go from grams to what? Moles. We have to go to moles. From moles, can we go to atoms here? Unfortunately not. Water is a molecule, and so we have to go from moles to molecules, and then we can go to atoms. Now, a few slides ago, we did the molar mass of water. I'm not going to scroll back, but it was 18.02 grams per moles for water. If you did not have this quantity, you would have to calculate molar mass here. To go between moles and molecules, we use Avogadro's number. And to go between molecules and atoms, we're just going to look at the formula. 
So here we have a three-step process. So I'm going to give myself three columns, give myself lots of room this time. We're going to start with that 6.91 grams of water. Every time we have 18.02 grams, we get one mole. And again, I should write the whole unit, so one mole of water. And every time we have one mole of water, we get 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. If I'm going too fast, just hit the pause button, okay? One molecule of water has two atoms of hydrogen, which now we have everything. Our grams is canceled, our moles is canceled, molecules is canceled, leaving us with atoms of hydrogen as our unit. And so in our calculator, we can enter 6.91 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd times 2 divided by 18.02. And you should get something like 4.62 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen. Oops, there it goes. You have 100 gram samples of potassium, sulfur, and copper. Which sample has the largest number of atoms? I would really like you to pause and try to do this on your own and then come back when you're ready to go through it. Because I am going to, oops, because I am going to assume that you've done that, I'm going to go ahead and make our plan. So here we have grams. We're given grams of everything. And notice potassium, sulfur, and copper, these are not our diatomics. And because of that, they're all atoms, okay? We can go from grams to moles. And from moles, we can go to atoms. We do not have to go from moles to molecules because these are not molecules. So we can just go ahead and set this up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with potassium up here. We have two arrows, so I need two columns. 100 grams of potassium. From our periodic table, I think it is 39.1, 39.10, sulfur is 32.06, and what was the other one? Copper is 63.55. So here we have our, I want to use purple for this one, 39.10 grams of potassium every time we have one mole. And then every time we have one mole of potassium, we get 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of potassium. So in our calculator, we have 100 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 39.1. And you get 1.54 times 10 to the 24th atoms of potassium. For sulfur, we have 100 grams of sulfur, oops, we know that every time we have 32.06 grams of sulfur, we have one mole, and having one mole of sulfur is the same as having 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur, oops. So in our calculator, we have 100 
times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 32.06. And you get 1.89 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sulfur. For copper, we have 100 grams. Oops, I should change my color, but that's okay. We know from the periodic table, every time we have 63.55 grams, you know what, I'm going to change this actually. I want to change this to um, silver. Let's do silver. If we did silver, having 100.0 grams of silver is going to give us 107.9 grams every time we have one mole of silver. And then every time we have one mole of silver, we get 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver. So in our calculator, we have 100 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 107.9. And you get 5.58 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver. Which of these is the biggest? Because these exponents are not all the same, you have to look there first. These are like comparing 15.4, 18.9, and 5.58 because this guy is smaller by one. Oops, uh-oh. So because of that, this 18.9, or the sulfur sample, contains the largest number of atoms. You have 50 gram samples of water, dihydrogen monoxide, and carbon dioxide. Which sample has the greatest number of oxygen atoms? Well, this is just a combination of everything we've done so far. We have water, which is 18, um, excuse me ahead of myself. Water is H2O. We know from a few slides ago that it's 18.02 grams per mole. Dinitrogen monoxide is N2O. This gives us 14, um, let's see, let's go ahead and make atomic tables first. Atom number mass and total. Here we have nitrogen and oxygen, two and one. This is 14.01 and 16. Gives us so far 28.02 plus 16 or 44.02 grams per mole. For carbon dioxide, that's CO2, C and O, 1 and 2. This is a mass of 12.01, 16. So we get 12.01 times 32, or plus 32, gives us 44.01 grams per mole. Now let's go back to what this, the question is asking. Anytime I see grams and I'm looking for something else, I always calculate molar mass. It just is a time saver more than anything else, okay? Um, now, here, again, I would really like you to pause and try to calculate this on your own. 
but I'm going to assume you've already done that. So we're given grams, and we're looking for the number of oxygen atoms. Now I'm going to call this atoms of oxygen, because if I have a number followed by O, if I'm in a hurry on a test, it's going to make it look like an extra zero, and I don't want to mess up. So to go from grams, we always go to moles using molar mass. These are molecules. So we have to go to molecules first using Avogadro's number. And at that point, we can look at the atoms of oxygen. So let's start with water. For water, we do have a three-step process. Uh, let's do it like this. I have more room there. If we have 50 grams of water, we know every time we have 18.02 grams, we get one mole of water. Having one mole is the same as having 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. And having one molecule of water means that we have one atom of oxygen. See what I mean, guys? If I wrote one, at, one oxygen atom, that looks like a 10. And I don't want to accidentally enter that in the calculator, OK? What on earth? OK, so in our calculator at this point, we can enter 50 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and then divided by 18.02. And that's going to give us 1.67 times 10 to the 24th atoms of oxygen. Now, let's do it again for nitrogen uh, dinitrogen monoxide. Get back to red for a minute. So if we have N2O, and we know we're starting with 50.0 grams of N2O, every time we have 44.02 grams, we have one mole of N2O. Having one mole means we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Hmm. And one molecule of N2O means we have one atom of oxygen. I found the shortcut, but it's right where I rest my hand. All right, so we have 50.0 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 44.02 grams per mole. And it gives us 6.84 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen. Mm, let's go ahead and do green. Now we have carbon dioxide. Again, starting with 50 grams, knowing that we have 44.01 grams every time we have one mole of CO2. Interesting. Whenever we have one mole, we still have Avogadro's number worth of those molecules. And then every time we have one molecule of CO2, we have two atoms of oxygen. OK, there's two of them there. So in our calculator, we get 50.0 times 6.022 times 10 to the 
times 10 to the 23rd times 2 and divided by 44.01. And this gives us 1.37 times 10 to the 24th atoms of oxygen. This time we are going to look, we have different exponents, so we can only look at the two that have the biggest. 1.67 times 10 to the 24, 1.37 times 10 to the 24, the sample of water ended up having the highest, okay? When you are setting up these problems, make sure you are giving yourself time to make a plan. Spending 30 seconds or so on your plan, you will still have sufficient time on a test to answer the question, but you tend to save yourself from making mistakes. And just until you are comfortable, use that mole concept map that I give you access to. You need to be more comfortable than you need it for on the um, uh, test, but that's um, fine. Um, these two slides should have been for the next video, so I'm going to leave it here.